Hello, I'm Lynn Jarvis, contributing editor for Across the Fence, and I'm joined by WCX-TV Sharon Meyer. And today we continue our travels in the exotic and fascinating country of Vietnam. And Sharon, what's ahead for us today? The saying, you don't take a vacation, a vacation takes you, is very appropriate here. You never know what's around the corner. But I do know we're going to be making our way north to Hanoi. From the map, it looks like our next stop will be Hoi An, a World Heritage Site with a famous covered bridge. We're going to have to find that and see how it compares to Vermont bridges. And we're going to get some refreshment now. Oh, look at this. Very nice. On our way to Hoi An, we stopped at China Beach, the landing site of the U.S. Marines in 1965, who came to defend the American air base at Da Nang. And it's also where thousands of war-weary American GIs came to relax while on leave, enjoying the 18 miles of beautiful sand beaches. Some 40 years later, the beachfront land has been appropriated by the government and leased to conglomerates who have built a casino, golf courses, and many luxury hotels. This is not what we'd come to see, and nearby Langco Beach has so far escaped the frenzy of development. The local fishermen still use it as a launching area for their small boats departing after dark and returning at sunrise. As soon as they get back, the fish are unloaded and sold at local markets or in makeshift stands along the road where this lady works, her back bent from carrying heavy loads across the sand. As you can see, the catch was bountiful with quite a variety to choose from, such as lobster, prawn, sea crabs, mackerel, and squid. In the foothills of the Marble Mountains are several shops that provide much needed employment for those with a creative bent. All the marble came from nearby mountains, but with the supplies now depleted, it's brought in from quarries to the north. If you ever wanted six-foot-tall lions, dragons, or perhaps a smiling Buddha, this is the place for you. Hoi An is an ancient town on the Tuban River, just three miles from the South China Sea. Once an ancient trading port, the river now serves as an important food source with an abundant supply of clams and fish. In 1999, it became a World Heritage Site and the Old Town is now protected from development and is slowly being restored with the help of preservationists from around the world. An example of this is the historic Phu Kien Pagoda dating back to the 1600s. It's dedicated to Tian Hao, goddess of the sea and patron of sailors and fishermen. Inside is her statue, looking most royal in robes crafted of pure gold. She is flanked with two helpers, one with acute hearing and the other with powerful vision. When they detect a fisherman in distress, Tian Hao is informed and she radiates her spiritual blessings across the sea. Dusk was setting in when we found the famous covered bridge of Hoi An, built by the Japanese in the early 1600s to connect their side of the town with the Chinese quarters across the river. It's the most visited attraction and a beautiful reminder of those ancient days. Even though it doesn't look a bit like our covered bridges back home, it still gets young and old across the river, and I expect over here, a place where people take shelter on rainy days. By now it was getting dark and we decided it was time to head back to our hotel, very happy with the day's adventures. After dark, it is gorgeous here. The lights of Hoi An reflecting on the Thien Hao River will be one of the highlights of our time in Vietnam. Looking much less romantic in the morning sunlight, we were on our way to the village of Trake to visit a large organic vegetable farm with many stops along the way. Marco got to try out his pottery making skills with the help of Francine on the foot treadle. Thanks to UNESCO staff, residents of small villages like these have received valuable training to supplement their meager incomes. In this small town, UNESCO established a wood carving workshop where, under the most primitive of conditions, with long hours and intensive heat, artisans turn out beautiful pieces of art like this Buddha carving. By midday, we arrived at the organic gardens and were impressed by how well kept they were with hardly a weed to be seen. 
In this part of Vietnam, nearly everything is grown organically with hand labor, manure used for fertilizer, and little air pollution. We were treated to a delicious organic meal prepared by Chef Quan using locally grown meat and vegetables. As you can see, he has a flair for the dramatic. Ooh. It was a perfect afternoon to get out and work in the gardens before those thunderheads brought in a late afternoon shower. And it wasn't long until women, who do the gardening here, arrived on their bicycles to start watering all these plants. It's a backbreaking job as each bucket weighs 40 pounds when full of water, and these Vietnamese women are tiny. It had been a day full of adventures, and what better ending than a performance by the Chom dancers back at our hotel. On our way to Hue, we drove through Da Nang, site of the air base used to launch strikes into North Vietnam. Happening upon these children just getting out of school is the most memorable part of my journey. You just knew they are well cared for and that our visit was as exciting for them as it was for us. Hue is located on the banks of the Perfume River with a population of some 300,000 people and a fun city to explore on foot despite the fact that it was 102 degrees when we arrived. Traveling with us were Joe Carroll, a part of the WCAX news team, Sharon's husband, Rainey, and Marco Ayala, the video editor for our show today. Join us as we enjoy some of the sights and sounds of Hue. It's not that easy. The Hue Citadel, dating back to the early 1800s, is the city's signature attraction. It's not terribly old, but it has lived through a very hard war and time and neglect have taken their toll. It was the seat of power for the country's last dynasty until 1945, when Emperor Bao Dai was forced out by the Ho Chi Minh-led revolution. In 1993, UNESCO declared the Citadel a World Heritage Site, and along with the government of Vietnam, $61 million was dedicated to a massive restoration project slated to be completed in 2015. As you can see, preservationists working from around the world have done a splendid job. Our next stop was Halong Bay, a very popular tourist destination. A perfect docking made it easy to climb aboard and we were glad to get here early before the place got any busier. Halong Bay, situated in the Gulf of Tonkin, includes some 1,600 islands and inlets framing an amazing seascape of limestone pillars. Halong translates as where the dragon descends into the sea, evoking the Vietnamese legend of its creation. They say the islands were created by a giant dragon that lived in the mountains. As it charged towards the coast, its flailing tail gorged out valleys and crevices. When it finally plunged into the sea, the impact filled the area with water, leaving only the pinnacles visible. In reality, Hulong Bay has experienced millions of years of geological change influenced by many factors that have not only created one of the natural wonders of the world, but also a precious geological museum that has been naturally preserved in the open air for the last 300 million years. Several of the islands are hollow with enormous caves. Join us as we explore the Thien Grotto. Welcome to Vietnam. Vietnam. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. 
Hanoi is a very welcoming city and it seems like everyone wants to strike up a conversation. I was very surprised and touched when these girls gave me this lovely little makeup mirror, just the right size for traveling. Well, Sharon, what a great way to be welcomed to Hanoi. They were sweet, weren't they? Yes, they were. Well, as you have guessed, we have arrived in Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, with a fascinating blend of the East and the West. The Chinese influence from centuries of domination and French during the colonial period. It's largely unspoiled by the modern architecture of the 1970s and 80s, and it's now going through a modernization that's making it a rising star in Southeast Asia. Well, there's a lot to see and do here in Hanoi, so let's get started. And Sharon, where should we start first? Let's begin right here at the Temple of Literature founded in 1070 and dedicated to the Chinese philosopher Confucius. Six years later, Vietnam's first university began here to teach the children of royalty and aristocracy. The school continued until 1802, when more space was needed and the Temple of Literature was transformed into a religious center. The long, narrow temple complex consists of courtyards divided by walls, lakes, and gardens leading to the statues of Confucius, whose teachings emphasize personal and governmental morality, justice, and sincerity. Despite its history and beauty, we were even more impressed with the students who had gathered here for their class pictures. The atmosphere was happy and festive, and these lovely young ladies were pleased to have us take their photos. And what about the boys? Well, they were here, but like most teens, they probably wish they were somewhere else. And certainly Senator John McCain wished he was somewhere else on October 26, 1967, when he was shot down on a bombing mission over Hanoi and parachuted into Truk Bok Lake. He fractured both arms and a leg ejecting from the aircraft and nearly drowned when he parachuted into the lake. He was transported here the Hoi La Prison, nicknamed the Hanoi Hilton, where he received marginal care, losing 50 pounds and his hair turned white. On display is the cot used by Senator McCain, along with his flight suit and parachute taken by his captors. Fellow traveler Martin Martinez from San Antonio, Texas, had four tours of duty in Vietnam. He is astonished by how different things are now. Actually, the, the most impressive uh, thing about uh, returning to what was home for me for, uh, from 1964 to 1968 was uh, to see the people, uh, that uh, they seem to be uh, a little happier. The tempo of uh, life you know, has returned. I don't see the fear in the people's uh, uh, actions, in the people's faces, and I think that uh, now that it's all over, uh, Vietnam has a chance to uh, rebound and uh, join you know, the, uh, the community of uh, the uh, developing countries. We have time for just a couple more stops. Everyone who comes to Hanoi has to walk across the Morning Sunlight Bridge. In the Buddhist culture, red symbolizes good luck and it's a favorite place for locals and visitors from around the world. And a must-see is the water puppet show at the Thang Long Theater, a tradition that dates back to the 11th century. The puppeteers stand in waist-deep water behind a screen and control the puppets using long bamboo rods with music provided by a traditional Vietnamese orchestra. Enjoy along with us. Sadly, this brings our Southeastern Asia visit to a close, and Sharon, I'm astonished by what we've seen. When I think of this part of the world, my memories go back to the Vietnam War and the terrible things that happened, but now so many impressive changes. And we've been traveling with a couple of Vietnam War veterans, and of course, this has been an amazing trip through Vietnam, as you might imagine. In fact, when the plane landed in Hanoi, one of them turned to us and said, never in a million years did I think I would be here. 
And traveling through Vietnam, we've met some wonderful people. They're friendly, helpful. I've actually enjoyed the food. It's, it's been a <laughs> wonderful experience. So from Sharon and me here in Vietnam, thanks, thanks for so watching. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.